your fresh and unbiased voice in American politics. Hey guys, welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 538 forecast for the final time this election season, and we're going to be taking a look at what 538 and Nate Silver project at this time for this election by chances of winning and individual states and who who do they think is going to be the next president of the United States. So before we begin, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. I would also like to announce that tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we will be going live for election day. So let's get started. So at this point in time, we have this 538 forecast, which is at this point in time, you could say one of the best ones out there when it comes to this election. And they provide a lot of the data and they have a prediction and it's based a lot on the data that we do have. So traditionally, since it's like this close to the election, the election is in less than 24 hours. I mean, people are going to be voting and within more than a day, we're going to be getting um, some results, early results, maybe late, and we might even know tomorrow who's going to win the election. Um, however, so this data means that it's probably going to be very, very likely um, of, of replicating of what's going to happen. Keep in mind in 2016, the data was wrong. So you have to keep that in mind and take this with a grain of salt. However, since this is the last time we're seeing this on forecast, it's crucial to understand that this is actually a real possibility of going to happen when it comes to the election. So at this point in time, Biden is favored to win the election. And generally speaking, this is just a representation that, I mean, if you pick out a random hat, chances are Biden is going to win the election if you look at the probabilities. Keep in mind, again, they like to mention here the, the news. Some of the most important things right now are what's going on with the election. They're campaigning over there. Oh, Trump went to Florida. Biden is in Pennsylvania. Harris was in Texas. That is the type of news we're seeing. And at this point in time is where they go is the biggest news. It's no longer about the pandemic. It's no longer about oil. It's no longer about healthcare. Um, like the news, the news cycles are not worried about that. Right now, they're really worried about these campaigns. And that's truly what they're covering. And at this point in time, we're less than the home stretch. We're almost there um, to see what happens in this election. And generally speaking, I mean, Biden is doing extremely well. 89 to 100, um, 89 and 100 to Donald Trump's 10 and 100. So 10% chance versus Biden's 89% chance with, of course, that 1% chance of an electoral college tie happening, which at this point is definitely a possibility. So why, what does this mean? So this essentially is out of every time they simulated the election with their extensive um, forecasting tools, they take into account polls, they take into account um, historical voter trends, voter turnout, all those different things, all that together gives them 40,000 possible results. Out of those 40,000 results, Biden is the victor. Only 10 of those times, Trump is the victor. So that is the thing that we must understand. And at this point in time, we're seeing Biden do very, very well. In most scenarios, I mean, you could see him getting by a pretty decent amount of electoral votes, even to like a very, very extreme scenario for the Democrats, where they sweep most of these states they would win at their best case scenario, 475 electoral votes. Well, the Republicans at this point in time are only at their best case scenario is 328. So the possibilities aren't too big. And at this point in time, the pathways for the Republicans are smaller. That does not mean that the pathways are not there. Keep that in mind. And I mean, right now, the pathways are just on Biden's side. He has so many possibilities to win this election. Uh, when you look at the electoral map, at this point, they're projecting a Biden victory tomorrow. Now, if you take a look at this falling graph, it shows you the possible scenarios by how likely they are of happening. So, for example, this graph right here shows you, for example, the chances of Biden winning after you pass this sort of point in time. And if you see this side, they're going to be symmetrical, like the diagonal qu quadrants, um, simply because they're essentially the same the same graph. It's just flipped around because this is the chances of something happening. In this case, any scenario from here on is going to be a, tr a Trump victory from here on is going to be a Biden victory. The other thing is replicated on the other graph. So in this case, these are the chances of a Trump winning. Um, these are the chances of Biden winning. And at this point in time, you see this. Biden is the clear favorite. 
And he's even expected to, I mean, his, right now, most simulations put Biden over 400 electoral votes. We've never seen something this drastic in a recent election. Over 400 electoral votes, that would be a more than a modern day landslide. Now, I mean, most averages are like he's pretty much rolling about the same um, margins of anywhere from 270 for 280 to like 400 or that be his big peak right there um, where most simulations put him. However, right now, I think the election will probably fall a little bit closer to the center of a closer election. Now, for the president, we're seeing very, very tough map right here. We're seeing, I mean, the possibilities of him winning are quite considerably low. And at this point in time, I mean, considering that Biden has so many opportunities, I mean, this is what we're seeing with this graph, that truly the chances are behind Biden. And Trump still does have his possibilities, yet they are not that strong. That's a thing we must keep in mind. And at this point in time, that's one of the big parts of the election. And this is a good way to quantify and a good way to see this with our own eyes of what the difference is during this election. Going on to the next thing on um, this forecast, we have their electoral college map. They call it the electoral college snake. Essentially, the states that are on the tips, in this case, the state of um, Nebraska's third congressional district, and the state of, I think it's D.C., I would guess, right? Um, the city of D.C. Those are the states that are going to go most drastically to the president and to the former vice president. Now, as we get closer, these are going to be the states that matter. So right now, I mean, they're putting like Texas, Ohio, Georgia, North Carolina, Maine, Florida. You have states like Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada. These are going to be the crucial swing states. And at this point, Biden is winning because at this point, they have Biden winning in Wisconsin by a considerable margin. They have Biden winning by almost 10 points. Michigan, again, pretty considerable margin, almost like eight to seven to eight points. Nevada, they have Biden up by six points. In Pennsylvania, they have Biden up by five. In Arizona, they have Biden up by three. In Florida, they have Biden up by one and a half. In North Carolina, they have Biden up by, again, one and a half, about or 2%. Georgia right now, um, very, very tight. I mean, Trump is losing in Georgia by 1%. And Trump's only one in Ohio by 0.6%. I think this is a lot more left-leaning than my prediction would be. This prediction, I think, falls a little bit more in giving a lot of um, credit to Biden. I think Biden would probably lose out of this map right here. We have Georgia. Um, he'd probably lose there. And he's probably going to lose Florida. North Carolina's on the fence, going to be the closest state. Um, however, at this point in time, we're looking at a Biden victory if we take a look at these numbers. So, I mean, just take a look at Donald Trump to win. We need to win Georgia, North Carolina. Maine, Florida, Arizona, and Pennsylvania. It's not impossible considering how much he's been campaigning. He's had five rallies yesterday. He's going to have five rallies today. It's a lot of excitement. It's a lot of movement of voters. And in those states especially, I mean, he went yesterday to Georgia. He went yesterday to North Carolina. He was yesterday in Florida. He sent surrogates to Arizona. He was going to Pennsylvania and Wisconsin today. So at this point in time, it's not impossible for President Trump. However, they give him an unlikely chance of victory. Now, here is the most interesting thing about this forecast. It shows us how this election has changed since the beginning of this forecast. This forecast was launched June 7th of 2020, which was about when we started to get into the big George Floyd movement. We saw him die during that point in time when um, a lot of those attacks, consider that, considering that, came out. He did pretty constant. He was pretty, the election was pretty constantly going at the same peak. However, after the first presidential debate, we saw the president completely take a dive and went from having a 25% chance to having a less than, I mean, 10% chance at this point. Now, as we get closer to political events, the chances of winning is going to be more clear and it's going to go up definitely for the, uh, for the person they expect to win. However, for the president, we're seeing some sort of movements, which are not the most encouraging to say the least. Now, taking a look at this on the electoral vote, um, vote count, right now, I mean, if you take a look at this, Biden, 349, they're expecting Trump, 189. Again, very strong numbers right now for the former vice president. There's very small chance this election probably could go to Trump. There's only like a very slim possibility. And it has to be right there in the middle. It has to be very precise. Is it impossible like I've been thinking throughout this whole video? No. 
However, it is unlikely. Now, take a look at the popular vote. Right now, they're giving that to Biden handily, and I think um, a lot of Republicans are clear on that. They're not going to be able to win the popular vote. It's at this point almost a non-negotiable. It's impossible for them. However, they can definitely win the uh, Electoral College at this point. And, I mean, it's pretty severe that Biden has over a 7% lead, um, or 8% lead, rather, when it comes to the popular vote nationwide. Again, that's not a good sign for the president. Now, what I think is the most interesting thing about this forecast is that they give you the popular uh, the possibilities of certain things happening. For example, they give Trump a 3% chance of winning the popular vote, while they give Biden a 97% chance. Trump winning more than 50% of the popular vote, there's only a 2% chance, but Biden has a 95% chance. It's very strongly likely. Trump wins in a landslide, absolutely impossible at this point. That's They, 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 they can't have it like that. Biden winning a landslide is a 30% chance. That is substantial. And, I mean, a lot of these things are repeating itself. Trump wins the popular vote but loses the Electoral College. Not going to happen. Although Trump winning, uh, Biden winning the popular vote but losing the Electoral College is somewhat likely right now. No candidate gets to 270, essentially a 269, 269 scenario. Not going to happen. Less than 1% chance. Trump flipping a street, 25%. Which, I mean, it's not horrible. However, it's not the best of odds. Biden flipping at least one state, 98%. So the chances are Biden is going to go and win a state. Map stays exactly the same, less than 1% chance, and um, it hinges on a recount, 4% chance. It's not going to happen. So, I mean, overall right now, we're seeing a very close and tight election. Within the next a couple of um, hours, we're going to start seeing the final picture of what's going to happen. But until then, Biden is a favorite to win this election. And, I mean... Generally speaking, the president is behind. He still has today to convince voters. And truly, for this point in time, for the president to win, he has to get those Republicans out to vote. I mean, if he can do that, he's going to be fine. He's going to win, actually. Or he could win. And if Republicans can exceed voter turnout, they're going to be fine. However, at this point, it's looking like the Democrats have a very strong election and Truly, tomorrow is going to be the real thing. It's We're no longer dealing with polls. We're no longer dealing with forecasts. We're dealing with the actual results. And tomorrow, it's going to become very, very clear who's going to be winning this presidential election. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a huge thumbs up, like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to be up to date with our latest content. Please remember to stay tuned for tomorrow's live stream on election night. Very big thing that you guys can't miss up. Other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and goodbye.